do. Start the applause at the front, gently, gently, spread it round the back. Spread it back. applications and I sent them to the relevant agencies. Problem is, it turns out that you can't make lofty, unsubstantiated claims about genetic modification. They fall on deaf funding agency ears. They apparently want some sort of evidence that genetic modification isn't some crazy scheme cooked up by money-hungry scientists. I've just discovered, by the way, that making the little air quote symbol while you're holding a microphone is rather difficult. If it looks to you guys down here like I'm having a small seizure while I'm up on stage, don't bother calling the medics. It's air quotes, okay? If it turns out that I actually am having a seizure, call the medics. Anyway, there I was, a research scientist with no funding. What was I going to do? I was depressed. I was spiraling down, down into a pit of despair. I really, I, I hit on what I thought was the only sensible alternative in that situation. I decided that I needed to become an evil supervillain, <laughs> bent on total world domination. If they weren't going to fund my research, I was going to bring them to their knees. <laughs> So what did I do? I converted my lab to a lair. <laughs> Every good supervillain needs a lair. I converted my V-Reg Renault Clio to a supervillain mobile. Well, actually I just did that with some stickers that I got at Halfords. But, oh, oh, I made a costume. Hang on. I became Genetic Modification Man. <laughs> GM Man. In equal parts, evil.
sadly, for me, creation of my army of minions has been held up by the Use of Animals in Research Committee at my university. <laughs> the paperwork is a bitch. No, no rabbits are going to be harmed in my research. In fact, if I have it my way, they're going to harm you. <laughs> All superheroes and supervillains suffer this sort of torment from time to time. Me, like Superman who came before me, I have my own kryptonite. It's called PDR. Have you heard of PDR? Yeah. No? No one? The Professional Development Review. This is an insidious process. It's designed to strip delusions of grandeur from scientists and supervillains alike. It's a process whereby one has to go stand in the boss's office and account for all of your research and teaching productivity during the past year. So there I was, stood trembling in my boss's steely gaze. And I had to say to her, no, I haven't managed to secure any research funding. But then I told the story immediately of my new supervillain persona, complete with the sexy costume. <laughs> I thought the film rights potential alone would be enough to sway her to my side. You know what the bastard did? That's right, a fate worse than what's befallen Jeremy Clarkson. She promoted me. Yeah, so now I'm Professor GM Man, hence the stupid elbow patches. She said, put aside all of your silly supervillain nonsense. Start wearing your pants inside of your tights like a normal professor. Anyway, promotion in academia comes with a whole host of new responsibilities, and I was soon tasked with doing outreach. Outreach, what a stupid concept. As if a scientist is going to go out in public and talk about science. She said to me, tell the people why our research is innovative. Network with people and scientists everywhere. What fresh hell was this? I decided, of course, but the very best way to do outreach, to talk about the benefits of science to society, was to form a new organization of like-minded thinkers. People united about the benefits of science. And, and belying my supervillain background, I pictured this new organization as somewhat akin to, like, I don't know, the Justice League of America, maybe? Or, no, even better, SHIELD because of the power of a positive acronym. My new society I've created is called the Brain Trust. Bridging research, innovation, networking. I mean, it was gonna be the ultimate acronym. So anyway, I've started the Brain Trust and I've been soliciting new members. Early days though, the only name I have on my sign up list so far is Ivo Graham. He's rubbish. <laughs> He just wants to go around being Mr. Funny Man. I mean, come on. So, anyway, the job of the Brain Trust is to take the small research gains that we've made and try and translate them into lucrative, money-spinning products that benefit our host institution. This is all something about stimulating the economy, I don't know. For my part, I've hit on the brilliant idea of marketing my glowing green rabbits as nightlights for children. Brilliant! I know, pun intended, by the way. <laughs> Turns out the paperwork is a bit of a problem here again. It's health and safety gone completely out of control. Apparently because my rabbits were initially bred as a howling demonic plague, I now need to demonstrate that they no longer represent a threat to humanity. <laughs> When's the nanny state going to end? <laughs> Anyway, what else have I done as part of the Brain Trust? Oh, I've created new Brain Trust t-shirts, but oh, oh, even better. I'm at the moment trying to recruit a savvy media marketing person. And that's because, do you remember up near the top I said that maybe I was mm, slightly dyslexic? Innovation and networking. 
You know, as an outreach juggernaut, maybe the Brian Trust doesn't carry quite the same weight that the Brain Trust might have. I don't know, that's a small detail that I need to get fixed up before the next dreaded PDR. In the meantime, if you're interested in joining me and my colleagues in the Brian Trust, remember, <laughs> membership benefits include a supervillain sidekick costume with Y friends in your choice of color. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that heavily costumed show.